So the best hackers and bug bounty hunters out there would always advise you to find out assets which are not easily discoverable by everyone in order to increase your chances of finding vulnerabilities. And one of the ways of finding these hidden assets is by looking into JavaScript files, which most probably would be a hidden treasure for you in case you're trying to search for hidden endpoints. And the one tool which almost all security researchers and bug bounty hunters use every day is none other than Burp Suite. So I connected the dots and I decided that I'd create my own Burp Suite extension, which does just that to prove to you that writing your own Burp Suite extension is not difficult at all. In fact, by the end of the video, you'll be able to create your own Burp Suite extensions too. Furthermore, if you're new to this channel, I'm Muxit and I make videos related to cyber security on this channel. So before we begin, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Okay, so first things first, for those of you who are new here, Burp Suite is a very powerful proxy tool which is used for web application security testing. Let's call our extension Gouge. So let me quickly visualize what Gouge is supposed to do. So say we have a website called target.com and inside target.com's webpage, there are multiple different endpoints found in its JavaScript. So say there is Google ad services.com, uh, there could be analytics.google.com slash portal slash admin.php. There could be different JavaScript files which are linked inside it. So say target.com slash uh, api.js. Now, uh, what Gouge would do is Gouge will try to make a request to this target.com webpage. It will try to extract all of the URLs which are present over here and keep it with itself. Not just that, if it sees a .js file which is present in the HTML um, body, it would make another request to this api.js and say inside the slash api.js endpoint, there are other interesting endpoints which are seen say target.com slash api slash v1 slash user list or target.com slash api slash v1 slash dashboard so if it sees a js file it will try to hit all the js files which are seen in the target.com web page and it will make an http request to those js uh, endpoints as well here's the interesting part it will copy all the, the endpoints which are seen inside that js file and it will append that to its already existing list as well so now we don't just have this set of uh, endpoints which are seen in target.com we also have the endpoints which are seen in all the JavaScript files which are present in target.com's web page. So Burp Suite is basically written in the Java language. However, today we'll be using Python to build an extension. We'll be making use of something known as Jython, which is an implementation of Python programming language to run on the Java platform. We'll come back to that later. To build an extension, we'll be making use of Burp Suite's own API, which allows us to create custom Burp Suite extensions any way we wanted to. First, we import all the necessary Burp Suite interfaces which will help us build our extension. And we also import some utility libraries like RE for regular expressions and URL. Next, we define our class burp extender, which implements iBurp extender and iScanner check interfaces, which we had imported earlier. Now, the next method is pretty important. It is called the register extender callbacks uh, method. So this method is basically called when the extension is loaded, where we set up the callbacks and the helper methods for later use. Uh, we will also be setting our extension name which will appear in Burp Suite. The register scanner check function will be registering our custom scanner check and issue alert will be issuing issues and alert in Burp Suite to confirm our registration and finally the print method will print a message to the console for confirmation that our extension has loaded. Next, we define two regular expressions, one for finding URLs in the response body and another one specifically for identifying JavaScript files inside the response body. Now, the next method what we've implemented over here is the do passive scan method. This method is called to perform a passive scan in Burp Suite on our HTTP responses. We pass it the base request response parameter. We then get the response using the get response function. After that, we analyze the response using Burp Suite's helper method and inside the helper methods, there is an analyze response uh, function. We feed it response in the parameter. In the next function, we are basically extracting the HTTP body and storing it in the body variable. After that, we call our custom function find URLs and feed it the body variable, which basically contains the HTTP response body. We will come to the find URLs function in a bit. In the next lines, we've simply written that if any URLs are found uh, in the HTTP response, we need to print them and once they are printed, we need to call the check and process JS URLs functions, which will basically be checking for uh, any kind of JavaScript URL files present in the response body and then making a call to these URLs. 
The next function is the find URLs function, which takes body as the parameter. Body has the HTTP response stored in it. The find URLs method makes use of our URL regular expression to find all the URLs in the response body. Now the check and process JS URLs method takes a URL as a parameter, checks if it's a JavaScript file using our regex, and then makes an HTTP request to fetch its content. If the response is valid, it analyzes the JavaScript file body and finds any hidden endpoints or URLs which are present in it. And finally, the make HTTP request method takes a URL as a parameter and constructs an HTTP request to the given URL using Bob Suite's uh, helper functions. We've basically written the logic to handle both HTTP and HTTPS protocols, um, sending the request and receiving a response. We will be converting the URL string to a Java URL object. We then extract the protocol, which is HTTP or HTTPS, using the get protocol method and then use the get path function to extract the path from the URL. Next, we are making use of Bob Suite's helper functions. First, we create the HTTP service object using the build HTTP service method. We pass it host, port and protocol as its parameters. Next, we prepare an HTTP request using the build HTTP request. Finally, in the make HTTP request method, we are sending the HTTP request method through Bob Suite and getting the response. And then we return the response object using get response. If you remember at the beginning of the video, we spoke about using Jython to run our extensions, uh, which are written in Python on Bob Suite. So for that, we will be downloading uh, Jython's jar file. You go to Google and type Jython download, open the first link and click on Jython standalone. Once you have this downloaded, uh, you need to start Bob Suite go to extensions on the top, then go to extension settings. And over here in the Python environment section, um, click on select file and select the location of the jar file where you've kept it. Next is the part where we actually uh, load up our extension. So we click on add uh, in the extension details and the extension type, we uh, select Python and click on select file. Now we select the extension which we had coded. So once the extension is loaded, you will see this output over here which says uh, gauge extension loaded and ready to gauge for URLs. So this is the message which, which we had set in our print statement. Next, we will go to the browser and make sure that our Bob Suite is loaded and intercepting our request. Let's say we go to jython.org. Um, we scroll down, we click downloads over here. I'm just trying to browse this website and uh, make sure that Bob is being populated with some web pages. So once we go back to our Bob Suite, we see that it has started to populate all the URLs or endpoints which it sees in the web page's uh, HTTP response body. If we scroll up uh, and search for JS URL, for this JS URL over here, we found these HTTP URLs which were present inside this J JS file. So nothing really interesting over here. So say it was a different target you were testing and you come across an interesting JavaScript file. What Gouge would do is it will populate this area with all the URLs which are present in that particular JavaScript file. So it makes our task pretty easy. So at a top level, this is a very raw extension right now. I've not really put in a lot of time in this to uh, structure the output correctly. I will be working on this and I think by the time I release this video, there will hopefully be a proper structured um, extension and I'll make it free for everyone to download. So if you watch the video all the way till here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I will see you in the next video.